because the biggest issue that uh, uh, coaches and consultants have is that they're not in line with their offer, they're not in line with their messaging, yeah. or their offers aren't set up to scale. I don't know. I just look angry. I'm mean mugging the camera. Just, yeah. But, Is that what mean mugs look like? Yeah. Oh, you've got a logo. You should do that. Oh, that's cool. You can, Yeah, you can do that. It should be, what's it called? Transparent, where it's just the, it shouldn't have that white background, but I was like, fuck it. That's the only picture I have. Oh, that makes sense. Right okay. Yeah. So I'll just hang out over here then. That's perfect. Yeah. Did you mean to put it like right where I am? Yeah, to cover your face, so I should move that a little bit. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, guys? We're going to be talking about Facebook groups, grown Facebook groups. Jeff here uh, was my very first client, um, grew his Facebook group to over 50,000 members. I think you've denied, like, probably another 50,000. We denied we moved. about, like, 50% of the people that request, and then we purged, I think, 10,000 people so far. Yeah. So what was the reason for the purging and all of that stuff? So I grow your Facebook group that big. What I realized is that like the culture of the group was getting like out of bounds very, very quickly. Mm. And like when stuff starts to flare, it's very easy for people to just be like, well, if that guy is doing it. I'm going to start doing it too. And I saw a lot of, a lot of other people just dropping YouTube links, uh, which is like, that's not what we're going for. Uh, we saw people just PMing, yep. like, not what we're going for. I try to keep it on the thread. And what I realized is that if it's just me and me and another person corralling 60,000 cats, it's going to be pretty darn hard. Yeah. And so what I ended up doing is said, guys, I'm doing a purge. Um, if you've not been active in the past, like, let's just say year or so, you have a last chance, which is to comment on this thread. Otherwise, you're going to the profiles and removing them. And we went through like, I would, we went through up to, we did enough profiles where we banned like 5,000 people. Mm -hmm. And we go through each profile, we're like, all right, is this person a culture check or not? And 5,000 people later, everything started to line up pretty well. Like, I think the people that were attracting undesired action, we removed them. The people that were not active, I said, you got to step up or step out. Um, and then engagement just like went up because people realized, okay, either I'm in or out. Yep. Um, and people were coming to the lives, solving problems, making money, and, and overall it felt a lot better. So if I had to like add it all up, it's probably been like 100,000 requests without a doubt. Yeah. So I know we'll just go straight into creating a culture inside of a Facebook group yeah. because that's the biggest needle mover. I've been hopping on calls with people who have had their, their Facebook engagement has just died out, yeah. their Facebook group engagement. Yeah. And it's because you lose that sense of being valuable to people, yeah. being helpful, yeah. and you get jaded after you make a little bit of money from your Facebook group, yep. and you're like, I'm just doing this to make money, and then yep. that's not what helps you make money. What helps you make money is providing value to the group, yep. creating it, uh, making it a place to be, to get value from and stay around, and ultimately, your content should shift their beliefs so they ultimately want to join your programs, yep. but people get jaded and the value's not there. That's, so you've consistently, for two years, yeah. um, been able to do that, still super engaged, converts like crazy. Yeah. You just sold 50 tickets to your next master class. Correct, yeah. So what's the secret? Well, the, the sentence that you just said rings true, not for my group or your group or any digital marketing group, but real life business owner groups because it's like, it's a person problem. Like I'm active in my target clients group and I will be interactive and ask questions and and do my gosh darn honest to like build that awareness. And there's still admins, uh, people who are prominent in the group or just everybody acting just as jaded now as they were six months or a year ago. So it's not a thing of like, oh, I have to like go through this like massive transformation. You just have to recognize that it's, it's gonna be you no matter what. And it's either a function of Facebook, where you are in your journey or life itself. So it's gonna happen no matter what. But what I've discovered is that maintaining like a child, like, oh, that's so cool level of curiosity has really helped either extend that jaded time frame or just stop it from happening. But more importantly, like interviewing people other than me. Like I do a weekly lunch and learn and just staring at my screen and then just like trying to remember it, like memorize what's in here and then talk about it or what's in that book or in those books over there. It's like emotion exhausting, right? 
And so what I found is that if I can share the spotlight with people that I admire, know, like, and trust, that keeps me moving forward quickly. And ultimately, like, it's the easiest and best way for me to learn. Mm -hmm. So like in the other target client groups that I'm talking about, they also have interview series. And so like, they're still excited and motivated about what they're doing, even though they've been doing it for 30 years. Yep. I'm still motivating side about what I'm doing after two years because I'm doing interviews. Um, and I allow people to be part of my tribe. And it's not just about me, right? It's not a group where like, I'm the only person that can post. Like I've seen those groups, it's, it's not okay, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, that's not a reason why I go there. And so I've been lucky enough to like recognize that there are other people that want to be part of it, answer questions, build a business, things like that. I'm like, we can do this together as long as you're within guidelines. Um, and ultimately put everyone in a position where they're just moving forward faster. Yeah. I think that's been one of the reasons, like, it's not about me. It's about tribe. There's interview series. Um, and ultimately it's like, as long as, as long as stuff is within guidelines, it's kind of okay. So that's really helpful. Yeah. I think the, the two things that you've been ultra consistent with has moved the needle the most that has created that culture, created that community inside of your Facebook group and have moved strangers to raving fans of what you do. Yeah. It comes down to your live interview series and yeah. your ask me anything or what you call lunch and learns. Yeah. If people are just consistent with that, then their Facebook group will grow like crazy. You'll make a lot more money out of it. Yep. We just, one of our clients, John Whiting, uh, just made a post in our seven figure yep. CEO group where he he's made a hundred K per month with a new offer over the past three months. And he's used to doing paid ads. This is kind of a new organic thing for him, but he said, this is the best strategy ever yeah. because you get so intimate with your audience. And then it's a simple messenger conversation to book a call and the sales calls yep. are so much easier when they're coming from organic traffic. And if you're running ads and don't have a Facebook group, you are leaving a shit ton of money on your on the table. You yep. could at least two X, three X your business from just having a Facebook group and being consistent with that. Um, but if you just do and ask me anything an interview, uh, if you do two per week, awesome. If you just do one of those per week, yeah. that works as well. And people ask about content, like what content do I create? Yeah. You essentially, you have question posts, like what's your biggest problem? Yeah. What's your biggest goal? All of that stuff, create yeah. content off that. But also the lunch and learns. Yeah. You get really good questions from being uh, having people ask you questions on those lunch and learns. Correct. And then you turn those questions into content. Yeah, that was my original challenge. So like when I was thinking about how people write books, I was like, all right, so I have to write a cover photo and then I have to figure out all the stuff and then I have to edit it and then I have to do the back and I had to like create this thing from scratch, right? That's not actually how books are written. It's a guy who's lived his life, read some stuff and wrote it down. And then over the course, it's recollected and then reorganized. And I said, all right, how can I use that type of philosophy of, of recollecting, reorganizing and writing stuff down and then leveraging that into say a book or a YouTube video or something. And what I really hated was looking at a content calendar and saying, okay, so I have to make a post and I have to do a blog post and I have to do YouTube and then Instagram, I'm like, not my cup of tea. I wanted something that was workable in my brain and something that didn't require I mean, I could just see myself trying to write 800 words, just emotion exhausted, I got nothing, like it ain't gonna happen. And so what I like doing with my lunch and learns is say, hey guys, here's my three or four talking points. If you have questions, bring them on and I will answer the question on the live in a way that's obvious and explicit. Um, I'm gonna try not to do like short answers, but explain the before, the after, during, like get the whole thing understood um, and communicate in a way to where like that person can understand it as well as other people. And that is a lot different than a uh, conversation by a, a, a Facebook thread or even a messenger conversation. Like it's an in-depth answer. And so somebody will come on board and like, hey, I'm looking to get my first client, what do I do? Well, here's five or six different strategies. Here's a Google slide answer. Here's me talking through it. And here's like Google slides and boxes and diagrams, the whole thing. And let's just say it's like a five to 10 to 15 minute answer. Awesome. Not only is that person taken care of, but I've done my lunch and learn and I've reinforced my skill set. Now I get to leverage. So I can literally clip that and put it on YouTube. I can clip that, put it on Instagram. I can top bar, bottom bar with a, like a screen flow program or Adobe Premiere or whatever. Um, and 
as I'm thinking about that, I can come up with like 90 second ideas of like, hey guys, here's three strategies you can use to lend your first client in 30 days or less. And that becomes 90 second marketing videos I can use to do like KLT ads or branding ads, something like that, just like Gary Vee does. And so all of a sudden with a good 10 to 15 minute answer of me genuinely trying to answer someone's question, I can leverage that one idea into content my group, answering questions, YouTube, Instagram, probably write a blog post. If I feel like doing it, that can be the upcoming book article. I've got 90 second uh, videos and four or five other things that are just leverageable, all from that core awesome 10 to 15 minute answer. Yeah. So I've never had this like content calendar, lack of good enough type of approach. I'm always trying to say like, what answer can I give to where it's leverageable across like 10 to 15 different ways of communicating? And all of a sudden that one person gets a good answer and he's jumping up and down. Mm -hmm. So that kind of approach. Yeah. And you never have to think about, oh shit, what content do I need to create? Yada, yada, yada. It happens every week. Correct. Content is created from sourcing questions from your audience. Correct. The same way Gary Vee or Grant Cardone or Frank Kern or whoever you admire will give a speech and it'll be 60 minutes long. And all of a sudden they've got a year's worth of 90 second clips and they will hire someone to turn that into a transcription for their website. And then that'll be part of their book. And then it will be a mini lesson. So like, it's it's not a problem of trying to get more work done. It's what can I do to leverage the work I'm already doing? And once I made that shift, I was like, okay, so I can do a lunch and learn on Wednesdays for an hour. I can talk about my clients, answer some questions. And I'm, I'm still not an expert. Like I'm fucking three years in this. I'm, I'm barely functioning as an adult. <laughs> I can kind of figure it out sometimes. And I yell at Facebook all the fucking time, but I'm probably just one chapter ahead of somebody's question. Mm -hmm. Great. So I can shortcut your learning curve. I ain't got anything beyond that. Have a good time. And now all of a sudden, uh, I have all the assets that I need. All of them. And that's ultimately what winning looks like, I think. Yeah. I think that's a good point where it's like, we're barely adults, yeah. but it's the consistent imperfect action and learning from the action that ultimately allows us to optimize what we're doing yeah. for a result that we desire. It's at the core, it's the difference between experience and expertise. Like everyone thinks you need to be an expert to get something done that is fundamentally incorrect. You need experience and experience is different than expertise. Experience is I've seen this scenario before I know it's gonna happen and can best prepare and understand and plan what's gonna happen. And that only comes by doing it again and again and again. And what I talk about a lot is like, the best sales experience you're gonna have is on a sales call. You can read all the sales books, cool, fine, great, perfect. You can get 20% really fast. But the first sales call you bomb, that's that's zero to 80% really fast. Yeah. You know, you did right, no, you did wrong, you can do it again. Yeah. Um, it's just like going to the gym, like you can read about all the weightlifting books you want. Going to the gym is probably the best learning. Yeah. No, not Correct. right now until you take the action on it. And then in addition to that, that's why you hire coaches for accountability. Yep. Because it's not just about the action, it's about having those people, that person by your side to ultimately hold you accountable to that action and help you optimize on the action that you're taking. Yep. So, yeah, and that's something that Jeff has invested into a lot of coaches. Um, I've invested into a lot of coaches. If you're going into 2021, uh, without a coach uh, right now, hop on that bandwagon yeah. and get a coach. I will say that during the four years of college, uh, the best learning wasn't from a textbook, but it was a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a professor, right? The best four years of learning I had in my postgraduate, so I think master's degree and MBA program, wasn't through the textbook, it was through learning one-on-one -on -one with a professor. It's the same with my career at Intel and Erickson. I was like, great, that sounds awesome. Who didn't read the book? And everybody raises his hand. And then the professor says, okay, here's what you guys should be doing. And literally condenses 90 days worth of huff and puff into about three and a half minutes. And you're like, I can do that now. Yeah. Like there's no other way. Yeah. Um, like you probably would have been able to do that, but it would have taken longer. Yes. So you have those conversations, you hire those people to do it faster, yes. simpler, and uh, uh Faster, simpler, and fa faster, simpler, and faster, and faster. Yeah, faster, yeah, simpler. faster simpler, and faster, and, and faster. easier, and easier. Gotcha. Yeah. The F A F E method. <laughs> yeah. Faster, easy, whatever. Um, uh, I use the phrase uh, to shorten the learning curve. Yeah. Right. So, like, I know I could figure out how to do YouTube stuff. There's nothing stopping me. I could go full deep dive, have a good conversation, ultimately learn everything. And let's just say it'll take me six months. Okay, great. Or I could pay. I'm making up a number. A thousand dollars to a person 
who can get me six months into my journey in less than three days. Mm -hmm. The challenge is that if you don't value your time, you don't do that type of stuff. And there's only two resources, time and money. So you got to pick one, either you're spending money or you're spending time. And I would say the first two years of my Facebook ad journey, it was valuing money over time. Yep. Now I value time over money. And the internal conversation everybody should be having by watching this is saying, which one am I running out of more? And let's say it is money. That's fair. You should be focusing on that. Let's say it's time. And I think you and I are both pointing in our careers where it's like, it's a time thing. Mm -hmm. It's not a money thing. It's oh, a yeah. speed thing. It's an action thing. It's can we get that stuff done yeah. faster? Yeah. So the truth is always time. Like I knew I was always going to be successful, right? That was, that was going to happen. There was always those limited beliefs and always when I would shit would hit the fan, I would like question myself and be like, oh shit, I'm never going to get there. But I knew deep down I was always going to be successful. Yeah. So it's like, how soon do I want to get to that success? Yeah. So money wasn't the issue is time. That was the issue. Yeah. So like I was scared as shit with my first investment. It was a thousand dollar course. The most expensive thousand dollar course you've ever had. I thought that was a lot of money back then. And now yep. I've invested into uh, programs for $65,000 yep. and all of that. $90,000 two years ago. Um, but I had $600 in my bank account. I was yep. $82,000 in student loan debt. Yep. And I was like, well, I got on a webinar sold me on the webinar. I was like, okay, let's just full send it. Let's do it. Yeah. And it was scary. I was like, I don't know if I'm made for this, like all those, just all that brain trash. And then I landed my first client. Yeah. And then all of a sudden everything changed. Yeah. Right. It's like that one massive shift. I know that the biggest reason why beginners are stuck at beginners is because of mental trash. Mm -hmm. Like we've been trained or taught our whole life. Like you can't do that unless you have this qualification. No, you're not good enough. You need someone else's approval, things like that. And that will always bleed into your business career. Like I've spent 25 years of my life being told that you have to do this to get there. Mm -hmm. Like you have to be an accountant to practice accounting. You have to be a lawyer to practice law. And both of those sentences are not fucking true at all. Like I pay my accountant who's not an accountant and does a better job at accounting than most of the accounts that I've done. Like it makes no sense. He's just really good at this stuff, loves it, has a great time and said, Jeff, like, I don't give a shit about the CPA, neither do you. We're gonna talk tax and strategy and how you're not supposed to spend $300,000 in taxes next year. And then what's gonna happen is my CPA that I'm paying, let's just say 50 bucks an hour to, is gonna go ahead and stamp it, approve it, double check it, make sure they're both not in the wrong and have a good time. I learned more from that guy who takes the, I don't have to be qualified to do this approach, than the guy that's beg, borrowing, and stealing for another stamp. Yeah. I don't need those credentials, Correct. right? I don't need that, that piece of paper. I, I don't need that shit. And what's right. interesting is like having the piece of paper, the, the mistake in our brains is, oh, I have a piece of paper, now I'm good enough. That is fundamentally incorrect. Mm -hmm. Like I know doctors, dentists, lawyers, attorneys that I would not trust for five cents. Like I'm part of medical niche Facebook groups. I'm going, how are these people certified to do anything? You talk like 18 year old children. Like you are the worst people in the world and they're wondering why their business isn't good. Then they say, oh, I'm gonna get another certification. I'm gonna learn how to do this X, Y, Z, one, two. And they're like, that's not why you're unsuccessful. Mm -hmm. Like the reason why you're not accomplishing your goals has nothing to do with that stamp. Yeah. It's more to do with this up here. They're fucking dabbling, right? They're not going full force in learning what it takes to actually produce the result that their clients desire. Yep. Right. And starting a new year, the big motto for a lot of people should be don't fucking dabble. Yep. Like when you dabble, you don't get to where you want to go. You're not providing the value to the world to ultimately move the needle to make yep. this place a more beautiful place to live. Stop fucking dabbling and go all in. When people dip their toe in the water, what they're hoping for is a perfect scenario where everyone's going to be nice to me. It's going to be the top notch. Everything is amazing type of experience. And then I'll put my foot in. And that's fundamentally at the core, not how any of this works. Mm -hmm. Like you can't go to the gym for five minutes and be like, you know what? I just got a six pack. I'm going to do it again. That's not how this shit works, right? You can't put your toe into a sales conversation or dip your toe in the water to a sales conversation and have that person say, I'm so happy you half assed this. I'm all in. That doesn't fucking happen. Like, unless you're Elon Musk, chances of it happening are zero, mm -hmm. near fucking zero. I found that on my sales calls with my sales team, with every time I'm having a dollar driven conversation, the more invested I am the more invested that person is. 
I know with all of my hobbies and interests, the more invested I am, the more I get out of it. You see those dead fucking plants over there? That's me fucking dabbling. Yeah. Right? I'm fucking dabbling that shit. And that's why they're yeah. dead, right? <laughs> Meanwhile, like Scott is like selling X number of dollars per week and he's going all in on his plants thing. He's probably making more fucking money than me. And I'm like, well, those things are fucking dead. It's because I'm not going all in and I'm expecting those things to be a signal that'll be successful. Yeah. That's not how any of this works yeah. at all whatsoever. Yeah. So. Yeah, so you got Scott, like, who's really good with plants and selling them and keeping them healthy, yeah. right? Because he sells them. Yeah. If you had more conversations around plants yeah. with him about keeping them healthy, yeah. you would probably stop dabbling and doing that. Correct. So, like, I joined a $90,000 mastermind two years ago. Yeah. The content wasn't great. Coaching wasn't great. Mm -hmm. But the community, the people in that mastermind were phenomenal. Yeah. They were talking more about vision. They were talking more about values, more high level stuff. Yeah. And me at that time, I was just like going crazy in Facebook or making money. Right? Like, but these but, landing pages look awesome. You're like, nobody gives a fuck. Yeah. Okay. But there was no like true vision, true values there for my company. And being around those people, it started to sink in, it started to soak in. Yeah. And I ended up burning out that year, mm -hmm. but I went to Deer Park Monastery and realigned with my vision and values. Yeah. I don't think if I was in that community, I wouldn't have done that. Yep. And once I realigned with my vision and values, really discovered what those were, then the next year just blasted off. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Like the reason why people go to Harvard is to be with people that go to Harvard. Yeah. Not the other way around. Yeah. Like nobody goes to Harvard because of the textbook. It's the same shit. But people go to Harvard to hang out with other people that are good enough to get there. Yeah. And it's the same way with your coaching, your mentoring, your community, your culture, all of it. Yep. And true wealth is only skills and network, mm -hmm. right? The high level skills that you work on and that you optimize and that you possess. And then your network that can create connections for you for leverage. So that's a very strong sentence that most people will just like, oh, whatever, good thumbnail, end of conversation, right? Yeah. But if you really take to, to heart, it's your skills and your network, and you're saying, if skills times network equals wealth, and I'm not wealthy, what am I lacking, right? Like, which one of those is a zero? Mm -hmm. It's either, let's just say your skills are not desired in the marketplace, or your network isn't enabling you to, mm -hmm. to make money. And what's interesting is as you make that transformation, you hit this like ceiling of like, this skill isn't good enough. I can't make a hundred thousand dollars a week by being a plumber. Mm -hmm. And then either you make that transformation or you say, well, this is going to be my life. Like, you know, please that hit an aquarium ceiling. Mm -hmm. Right. So you hit that. Okay, cool. And then you start changing your network and then you get the snakes in the grass or the crabs in a bucket. It's like, yo man, you don't hang out with me anymore. It's like, that's because all you did is play fucking modern warfare three for three weeks in a row. And I really don't want to live that life. Yeah. But the challenge that person's not valuable. They're right? not valuable. And that skill of you trying to build something amazing, let's just say plumbing and hanging out with a guy that plays Modern Warfare at three all day is not gonna get you there, mm -hmm. right? So that's a thought process. But then what happens is you try to make friends and you dip your toe in the water and everybody's like, who is this half-assed committed person that never shows up? You bounce back to Modern Warfare 3. Mm -hmm. If you go and say like, all right, I need more than a plumbing skill set. Okay, great. I need to work on my business skill set. You dip your toe in the water. I'm not good at business. You bounce down back here. And that's fundamentally at the core why people are the bouncers or the toe in the water or whatever. Mm -hmm. They just keep hitting the ceiling and this becomes their life. Mm -hmm. Like that's their self identity. Mm -hmm. It's a combination of your skills where like you dipped your toe in the water and you didn't master it. So you're going to go back here and then you didn't know how to build a, a, a healthy relationship with new people. And so you're down back here and then ultimately you're unsuccessful and wealthy mm -hmm. and that becomes your identity. Mm -hmm. That that's where people will be like, that's just how it's gonna be. Yeah, that's my life. Yep. You know, the hard worker that I am, I'm like, you're making $17 an hour and you're 42, and all you're doing is running away from the reasons why you're unsuccessful. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the, the easiest way to solve that is by being part of culture and community, uh, from being part of programs like yours, from having great coaches, people that can excel at your learning. That's the network, mm -hmm. but then the skills, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where you can start reading books, taking courses, YouTube channels, or asking real life conversations with real people like this book that I've got here that I still haven't gotten through, but you know, we're getting there. <laughs> but I really like the, the mechanicalness of your sentence of its skills plus network is wealth. Yeah. There's no other way around it. Yeah. And I think the reason why I've been able to grow so much in my business mm -hmm. is because there are different levels to those skills, yeah. right? Skills equals value to other people, yeah. right? 
the more high level skills that I possess, the more value valuable I am to other people, yeah. the more they're willing to pay for my services, yeah. right? That's the basic breakdown. And I started off with running an agency and then coaching on how to get your first few clients for your yep. agency. Those were good skills. Yep. Then I went on to messenger bots, which were the big thing at the time. I yep. wrote out messenger bots for my clients and then I sold the templates, grew a little bit more, developing those skills. Then I moved on to teaching Facebook groups mm -hmm. and doing more coaching. And that was a higher leveraged skill. Yep. And now we're on to the past two years learning how to develop teams, develop systems, yep. hire. Those are much higher level skills. So I see, a, so people are willing to pay me more for that. Yeah. So that's why my business has grown. I've grown as a person, all of that. Yeah. But I see a lot of coaches and consultants in the space getting stuck in their zone and just focusing on that one thing yeah. that isn't super high leverage. So think of it as the fitness coach yep. that's just focused on losing weight. Yep. Great, like yes, people want that, but if you can add a mindset component on, yep. onto that, if you can add on a nutrition, like actually getting them optimized health yep. through, um, uh, through nutrition, all of that stuff, then you become way more valuable and you can charge more for your services. So that's part of uh, self-awareness or stepping out of your body or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like you can spend three or six months, like hardcore skill set figured out, great, fine, perfect. And at the end of your, like your biannual review, you're saying, is what I'm doing, is this going to get me where I want to go? Is this a first base skill set that's going to get me second base or do an entire like different line of thinking? Yeah. I know that the people that like double down on many chat, like all the way in when stuff changed, they freak the fuck out. Right. I know the people that double down all the way in on mastering Facebook ads, there's a change you're gonna freak out. I know the people that, um, as an example, like I am the best bench pressing coach in the world. Okay, great, but what about when your client gets a chest injury? Well, they can't be a client anymore, that's the end of the fucking conversation, right? If they're always doing that singular skill set, there's a level of comfort in it. You have stability and, and, and confidence in your repeatable skill set. And then you max out and you're like, well, this is my life again. Mm -hmm. And if you look at how CrossFit has grown, they've gone through several transformations. They were like, all right, we're going to do gyms first. Then we're going to train gyms, how to do gyms. And then we're going to build back end processes on how to do uh, culture correctly um, inside of CrossFit. Now they've got games like they just kept leveling up all the way through. They didn't stay where uh, Planet Fitness was like, we're just going to do gyms. Right. Yeah. They like kept moving up and up and up. I know my blind spot is always spending too much time on a mechanical skill set. Mm -hmm. I know that my brain is like, yo man, you're gonna love doing this shit again tomorrow. I'm mm -hmm. like, you got 30 days to get over that and then we're fucking done here. Uh, in my agency journey, I took the first, I think 30 or 45 days with the sales calls, recorded everything, wrote it down, here's the standard way of working, done, have a good time. Mm -hmm. uh, with fulfillment, I did the first five or six fulfillment orders. I said, I wrote this down, record the videos, go have a good time and now, Yesterday, my agency brought in $4,500. I didn't even know. Mm -hmm. I didn't even check it until the end. They went, oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Didn't know anything about it, right? Yeah. All the orders were built because somebody else was building it for yeah. me. And I forced myself into a very uncomfortable position yeah. where I suck at team stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm going, well, why did you just do it faster? That's my immediate mm -hmm. response. And so after I'm done with this book, it's going to be like teams, culture, communication, doing that next level, and ultimately getting to a point where it's like a million dollars a month. Yeah. So, yeah. Type of stuff. And you develop that skill set to ultimately become more valuable to your, not just to your clients, but to your teammates. Too. Correct. And, and consciously being aware of the fact that every single human being's brain wants to be in a cave eating Cheetos and having everything do the same. Mm -hmm. And that's cool if we lived in a world that didn't change. Yep. If you could work the same job for 30 years, retire with a Rolex and a turkey. That shit don't happen no more. Huh? Right? Like stuff changes what? For your business every six months? Every yeah, year. I would say every three months. Every three months. Yeah. A massive change. You're like, all right, we gotta be yeah. aware of it. Yeah. I know in my agency with Corona, it like took me out, I had to rebuild it, and now we're rebuilding again into a new program. Yeah. And so you just have to get comfortable with like, I have no idea what's gonna happen, but I'm gonna figure the fuck out. Yeah. That type of approach. Totally.
And like, if you're making decisions from your current circumstances, you're always going to stay where you're at, maybe move up just a little bit. But if you start thinking of, okay, this is where I want to be in my life, I need to make decisions from where I want to be, yep. instead of where I'm currently at. That's ultimately when your skill set moves up, your, uh, your network moves up, yep. and ultimately you get to where you want to go. The analogy that most people are very comfortable with is like, just think of it like a job. All right. It's so like, all right, I'm a senior associate at a law firm. I'm going to be really, really good at being a senior associate. It's going to be great. And then maybe they'll give you a promotion. That's not how that shit works. If you're a really, really good senior associate, you will stay a really good senior associate. Mm -hmm. But if you're conscious and aware and say, all right, I need to be a really, really good general manager, mm -hmm. that's a different skill set. That's a different conversation. And you have to bridge the gap. Mm -hmm. Read those books, read those skills, and act as such. Yeah. And then six months later, that man, why are you a fucking senior associate? You should be a GM. Yeah. You've got all the skills. You've been doing this job halfway the whole time. Stop doing that and come over here. Yep. And that's how that transition works. Yeah, one of our sales specialists did not want to stay in the sales specialist role. So he showed up to every sales training that yep. he could. Uh, like we, we use outside, uh, we use courses and other coaching programs for our sales team. And he was on every single sales training call. Yep. So he developed that skill set of being able to close. Yep. Ultimately, it was five months. Yep. We ended up promoting him to the uh, uh, sales rep role yep. because he was developing that skill set. And I could see it and he was showing up. So that's all it takes. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't say, I'm going to be the best setter. Right. He said, I'm going to be the best salesperson. Right. And he still he crushed it with setting because yeah. he needed to prove himself. But yeah, it's just um, being conscious and aware of it. Yeah, that type of stuff. So I'm going on. See if there are any questions. We got Eric here. We got Terry. Uh, Kevin asking if I'm going to do Vipassana. I want to when things aren't shut down. I'm sorry. What is that? Vipassana? 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 Uh, is that so, Indian food? No, it's uh, for 10 days, uh -huh. go to Buddhist monastery uh -huh. and it's just silent. You meditate for about 12 hours per day. Uh -huh. uh, you have just a little breaks, can't talk to anybody. And it's, it's like how I live my life now. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. 10 days, get away from everything. Uh, Avery Ford, um, our creative director actually did that. And uh, I went to a Buddhist monastery, it wasn't Vipassana, but it's powerful shit. So is that's like the, the mind. is that the harder version of what you did? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. I was in the minor leagues. The major just, leagues is just awesome. walking around seeing those varsity level monks. <laughs> just like, yo, that dude hasn't talked for three months. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. So I'll probably do that when things come back. Uh, Allison, what's up? Um, Hi guys, does it matter if you stream in the group on StreamYard or go directly into the group? Also, do you ever stream to more than one platform at a time solely in the group? I normally go live in the group, but I want to make my mom proud of me. So I did it on my personal profile today. So she knows you're successful. Yeah, I want my mom to know that I'm doing well. So, yeah. hey mom. Um, that's gonna be funny if she actually watches like forty minutes into this. Yeah, she's <laughs> like, like you're I watching it. all of it. Like why would you? I guess this is a test. What my mom, mom does is she just pauses for like three seconds, yeah. so it looks like she watched and then just keeps rolling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think my mom does the same thing, but she usually leaves a comment. But not on the business stuff, though. Yeah, yeah. Just on the personal stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Allison, I usually go live in one spot, um, and before the actual live, you can post in the different spots saying, hey, we're going live in the Facebook group at this time, if you're still moving more people in your group in mass. Um, so I would just go live in one spot. Um, and we also usually post after some of our lives that, hey, we did live on this topic, this is what we discuss. And then we tag those people that comment back in the live, get more engagement, more people watch, all that stuff. So. Cool, yeah. What else? Offers? Let's talk about offers. Okay. So uh, I'm going to come in from the angle of my coaching program, yep. uh, specifically for agencies. Yep. Um, I know that there's areas of improvement. We can call them deficiencies, but it's more like I know I need to do stuff differently to get to where I want to go. Mm -hmm. um, right now, my offer is a little bit like it feels like it's not half-assed, but not as effective as it should be. 
So for example, I have three coaching calls a week, prospecting, selling, fulfillment. Great, fine, perfect. The infrastructure is there. Um, I don't know if I'm communicating what I'm doing. I mean, it's obvious and explicit. And I do want to like forgive myself with this because this is always a problem for everybody. Mm -hmm. Like we do stuff without telling people that we do stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I know with my clients, their biggest problem is offers. Mm -hmm. My problem is with offers. Mm -hmm. And when the, the cleaning lady comes over, her problem is also offers mm -hmm. because she's doing stuff that I was unaware of and probably would have paid more for. Mm -hmm. Like she didn't tell me that she prunes plants. It wasn't on the fucking paper. I didn't fucking know, mm -hmm. right? But sure enough, watch tomorrow those plants will be pruned, right? Mm -hmm. um, for her as an example, like for me, I really value people showing up on time. And I'll get out of your hair and see you later goodbye. On the flyer, never said on time guarantee, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And there's exercises in my course area to talk about what's called the McDonald's problem which is like everyone's so used to saying the number two, we forgot about the Big Mac fries and Coke, ball pit, money back guarantee, on time service, all that. Mm -hmm. So as a way to forgive myself, like people always, and businesses always have an offer problem. Mm -hmm. and when I'm viewing this, I'm trying to take a step back and be like, all right, what am I doing that isn't obvious and explicit? And what do I have to add so that people are so excited about this that not only do they more commit, but they more commit dollars, time, effort, and get better results. Mm -hmm. So that's like the, the setup for that. Mm -hmm. So right now we've got a course, we've got coaching components. Um, we have no done for you aspects. Um, and I'm updating it probably once a week with like a new module or new SOP or something like that. Mm -hmm. So that kind of sets the stage for everybody who doesn't know. Mm -hmm. So is it selling it or delivering it? I think I've got a little bit of two problems because okay. I know that when I'm on a sales call, I get like emotion exhausted after like the second one of the day. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my God, I'm not in the right brain space. Every, I'm like having a mini heart attack. What if somebody says no, like normal sales stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I think on the sales call, I'm not obvious and explicit with everything, or I'm not emphasizing the points that matter. Mm -hmm. And on the fulfillment side, I'm never like so fucking proud of like, this is the best thing in the world kind of thing mm -hmm. that it leaches into the sales conversation. Yeah. So there's- it's new. Correct. Yeah. yeah. This program is now, I think, three months old or something. Yeah. I've had like 35 people go through it. Yeah. They're all coming up on the last tier of the 90 days or so. Mm -hmm. um, so it's definitely time to like fix stuff mm -hmm. and take a holistic step back kind of approach. Mm -hmm. So you have your promise. Yep. Promise is good. What are the milestones that people go through? They hit this, they do this first, they do this second, they do this third. Yeah. It takes this amount of time to go through this milestone on average. I would like somebody to be able to build their fulfillment engine in less than 60 minutes. So that means they can set up their ad account, they can create a mock ad, they can get their first batch of leads uh, within, let's just say, 60 minutes of setup and three days and 100 bucks and break their brain and be like, oh my God, this could work. Somebody mm -hmm. is calling my phone, wanting to buy this as like a pretend client. Like mm -hmm. you do it for yourself and they have confidence to do it for others kind of thing. Yeah. So I'd really like to get to a point where you can build your fulfillment engine. So is that the first step? It's not the first step. Okay. That's actually like the fifth or sixth step. Yes. Right, it's like, it's buried down in there. Mm -hmm. And only- So I wanna know in a logical order, yeah. what do they go through? That's what they wanna know, Yeah. right? What's the first thing that we do, second thing, third thing, fourth thing, fifth thing that we accomplish? Yeah. How long is that going to take? Yeah. Right? That's typically what they want to know. It's not about going into everything, the mass intricacies of the details. Yeah. But for example, for seven figure CEO, we have 12 systems in 12 months to make you a seven figure CEO in your coaching business. Yeah. So it's you start here, you go there, then there, then there, then there. Yeah. Right? And it's very logical and in order, right? Okay. Um, so there's um, there's the twelve systems, yeah. And then we have different stages. Okay. So ten to thirty k per month is the traction stage. Yeah. And then we have a stage from thirty to fifty k per month, and then fifty to one hundred k per month. Okay. Right. So we have three stages, and we have it mapped out what content you should look at mm -hmm. at each stage, what you should accomplish yeah. at each stage to graduate to the next stage. So, you so have it's, a an 12, it's a 12 month program yeah. and that's why there's so much in it, but it's logical of what you do in each stage. So I need, I think you're referring to like an agenda or table contents or something like that, or a guide, a syllabus. So if they're all coming in at a relatively same spot. Yeah, let's just say they're at zero. 
they're at zero. Yeah. Then you should have it mapped out where it's like, these are the things that you're doing in your first four weeks. Next four weeks, you're doing these things. Next four weeks, you're doing these things. Yeah. So it doesn't, so we have it set up in our course area where we have different courses, but we have the logical map of what they should focus on. So that means that let's just say is somebody coming to me, they're like, Jeff, I'm interested in doing what you're doing. I'm starting at zero. I go, okay, so here's the game plan for the next 90 days to help you land 10 clients, a thousand dollars a month. Yeah. Cool. Here's what you need to be doing the first 30 days, second 30 days and third 30 days. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's just say we've got a whiteboard. Okay, great. The first 30 days are doing X, Y, Z, one, two, and three. Same for the second and same for the third. Cool. Yep. So the first 30 days, and this is me just kind of spitballing right here. Number one, they need to fix their personal profile. Number two, they need to do some research about the target clients and customers. Number three, they have to do uh, customer interviews to know what those people actually want. Um, number four, they have to build their fulfillment engine as a test run to prove that it can work, like build a sample car. Mm -hmm. um, and then number five, once they've done that and then you know, they know that their clients have a problem, their niche can afford their services, and they built out a test run, it's time to start prospecting and go to businesses and say like, hey, I think I can do this. Here's the type of people that we serve. Are you interested in having a sales conversation? Mm -hmm. So that'd be like the first 30 days. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Cool. Yeah. And having a label for that is super effective. So what stage that is, right? Okay. So the first month is this stage. Second month is this stage that you'll graduate. Yeah. Uh, third month is this stage that you'll graduate. And it kind of gamifies it. You get gotcha. this shit done, then you graduate this stage. So like right? freshman, sophomore, junior kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Got, with different names. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So let's just say freshman is like, hey, you're going to build out uh, understanding of your, your target client market. Uh, we're going to talk to real life people You're going to do some prospecting and build out a fulfillment engine. That's freshman year. Mm -hmm. Once you've done that and you start getting people on the phone, awesome, you graduated to sophomore year and we're going to master your ability to sell, collect dollars and put yourself in a position where you know how to talk about a, a sales driven conversation, exchange money for services kind mm -hmm. of thing. And you're gonna do that again and again and again. And I'm gonna show you how to have, handle like client objections, client challenges, client problems, and start recording your course area to deal with recurring challenges. Yep. So like if your client always says X, Y, Z, one, two, and three, you don't have to like always tell them the same answer. You can just record it and send it to them like Google Doc or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. And then see a uh, junior year, I'm not quite sure yet, but that is that the right yep. line of thinking? Is that correct? Yep. Gotcha. Then you have that, then one more component that you need to add is a fast track to your your next client. Yeah. Right. If you can add that in with to the uh, one of the first pieces of content that they go through, fast track to getting your first client. Yeah. Then um, they'll see the value in it if it's actually moving the needle for them. So we have make your investment back in thirty days. Yeah. And we have strategies that they go through that we've had about 30 to 40% yeah. make their investment back in the first 30 days. Gotcha. And then it's like, holy shit, I just paid for this whole thing in the first month. Are you comfortable sharing your branded term for that? Uh, it's make your money back in 30 days. No, I mean like the actual tool that you use, the thing that they post or like. Yeah, so we have the mission post in there, we have a comment for value post. Yeah. So if you're coming in with an audience, most likely you're making all of your investment back in the first 30 days, yeah. if not at least half. So I've got, I recorded four modules. They're like the fast path to cash. They're not labeled as make your money back in 30 days, yeah. but I can just change the term. Yeah. And they range from doing like the call for clients, uh, setting them a, a referral program, uh, things along those lines. Yeah. Um, so like I can have freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, and those are all agendas. And then I'd be like, look, if you already have X, Y, Z, one, two, and three, here's a very easy way of making your money back in less than 30 days. Mm -hmm. And there are some people that come in with a list, previous clients, like they're resetting or restarting. And I can literally write a document saying, hey, here's how you can write out what you do. Do a mass email really fast and get some yeses. Mm -hmm. um, credit goes to, uh, I would say, John Logar, Logar, something like that. Mm -hmm, yeah. He's the first guy that broke my brain communicating to me what you're talking about. He would have us sit down and do like a big ass like email to our list, get some yeses, and then went, "Oh my god, it works!" Mm -hmm. That's the the domino effect you're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. And um, how it starts is how it finishes, mm -hmm. right? So you have your content mapped out, um, but 
you need to have some sort of onboarding call. Yeah. Um, like for seven figure CEO, we have three because mm -hmm. it, it's a pretty sizable investment. So we have an integration call with mm -hmm. our advisor that shows them exactly how to use the program. We set up a Chrome folder for them. Yeah. So they go directly to the course area or to messaging us or how to get support, all that. Yeah. Just at a click of a button at the top of their screen. And at that's, all times. that's valuable for people? They don't yeah. know how to make their own bookmarks? When we set it up for them, yeah. it's there. Gotcha. Right? It's in there because people get lazy. If you have a video on it, they're like, oh, cool video and then move on. They don't set it up. It's removing. So friction. we're like, yeah, we're like, set the fuck up. Yeah. Like, it's right here on this call. Yeah. Right. So the biggest issue people have in the coaching space is they might have an awesome program, yeah. but their clients don't know how to use the program. That's so program. that call is devoted to this is how you use the program. Yeah. Right. Then the next call is around offer and messaging. Yeah. Because the biggest issue that, uh, uh, coaches and consultants have is that they're not in line with their offer, they're not in line with their messaging, yeah. or their offers aren't set up to scale. Yeah. So we fix those problems on that call, gotcha. right? Um, and then our next call is a roadmap call. Mm. So here's your roadmap for the next 90 days, yeah. personalized to you. And it only focuses on three projects personalized to them, mm. right? So we don't want to overwhelm them with six, seven projects, three yeah. projects, next 90 days, you get these done, it will completely change your business, right? So we do it in three calls. Yeah. What you could do for more scalability, plus they're not paying you as much as they're paying me, right. is do a group onboarding call two times per month, gotcha. right? Do it on the first uh, Monday of every month and the third Monday of every month. Yeah. And you can go over those things, gotcha. right? In a 90 minute segment, yeah. 30 minutes devoted to this is how you use the program, 30 minutes devoted to their offer and messaging, yeah. uh, and then 30 minutes to their roadmap. Gotcha. What I enjoy about doing onboarding calls or pseudo one-on-ones or group calls is that it enables a lot of feedback and I can make adjustments to the course. Um, I like the idea of here's the agenda, here's freshman, sophomore, junior year. Um, I think I'm going to change my methodology from the three figure like prospecting, selling, fulfillment to freshman, sophomore, junior, and incorporate the easy parts into freshman, the medium parts into sophomore, and the hard parts of each module or each PSF into the junior year. Mm -hmm. um, I like the idea of like if you have these scenarios, here's your fast path to cash, make your money back in 30 days or less. I'm some reason like I hate the idea of like, let's get on a call and do a bookmark, but I can do that on the group coaching call. I'm yeah. be like, hey guys, do these instructions right now. I'm gonna play this Loom video, I'm gonna go to the bathroom, you better have the shit done, Yeah. right? And then all of a sudden it's bookmarked and things like that. Yeah, I guess, and it's in their space, right? So every time they log into their computer, they're looking at your course name in a folder, Yeah. right? So they can't ignore it. Yeah. Most people don't even have awareness of it. They forget about it and then they don't go into the course or program. And then they complain about they're not getting it. But if it's right fucking there, yeah. you bet your ass they're gonna click on it from time to time, even subconsciously and go back into it. What that I pays huge dividends over long run. What I enjoy is like it's kind of like putting a treadmill in your house, like you're gonna look at it every day and there's no longer a actionable excuse. Now it's on you. Yeah. Like if you're looking at the bookmark every day, it's like very clearly you know you're supposed to do it. Yeah. So it's it's much harder for a unsatisfied client to come in with the aggression or the anger towards you. You can be like, look, man, it's right there. Yeah. Like the treadmill's right there. Just go on it. Yep. So what what am I gonna do? Just fucking go on it, right? Um, so I like that part. What I would like to know is uh, on the sales call. Am I commuting those as communicating those as selling points? Like we have an onboarding call twice a week. We have an offer call twice uh, twice a month. We have a blank call twice a month. That's that is a selling point. Is that correct? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So like when they ask, oh, okay, you've nailed down their challenges. You've uh, nailed down their current situation, desired situation, yeah. like level of urgency, what they've done in the past, all of that stuff, and then it gets to the point where they're like, okay, what are the next steps? Yeah. Right. Ultimately, that's where you want to get. And then you go into what uh, use this so that statements, yep. which you're really good at, yeah. is, well, uh, once we get you in, you'll hop on your onboarding call on yeah. Monday. Uh, we have a fast track to 
uh, making your investment back in the next 30 days. Yeah. Uh, the onboarding call is specifically for you to set up X, Y, and Z. So you're ready to just blast off and nail down all the foundations on one call. Yeah. And then you go into, well, we have three calls per week. This is why we do this call. This is why we do this call. This yeah. is why we do this call. At the end of the 90 days, this is where you should be. Yeah. Yada, yada, yada. The, the big learning for me is the not having to re-record or change material in the course, but instead all you're doing is re-recording or changing the agenda. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, we found stereotypically the people that come in at this, you are a freshman year, here's what you should be doing. And either I can put that, pull a module from the course and just link it, or if I know something is missing, I just fill that blank in. Mm -hmm. And that removes a lot of uh, people going from the first of the book to the 90th page of the book and getting lost in translation or blah, 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 like, no, no. This is what you should be doing right here. Go to page 45, 90, 92. And then if somebody feels so inclined, they can read the whole fucking book. But that's not going to, if somebody does that, it's because they want to. Yeah. It's not a scenario of like, I have to do this and then I can, I have permission to go to the next thing. It's like, no, you just need to know these four or five lessons. Yep. So for me, in my case, if somebody's coming in freshman year, they probably have an awareness problem. They just not friends literally with their target clients. Here's what you should be doing on a daily or weekly basis. Um, you should also be doing your niche and industry research to know if your niche or your industry can afford your services. You should be identifying three to five people per week that you can have 15 minute calls with, have these conversations, pull out their problems, their needs, wants, fears, and goals, um, and then approach them one or two weeks later saying, hey, I've built out a fulfillment engine. I would like to do this for you, and let's see if this works. Because I've tried it on me and it works, and I want to do it for you too. That could be a freshman year. And if I do that, I don't have to re-record or reorganize anything. I just have to change the syllabus. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. That's doable. Yeah. Go. Good stuff. Good stuff. Anything else? The accountability coach. The I think accountability that's super coach. important. Yeah. And something that you can easily, if you up your price, yeah. add an accountability coach, start with 10 hours per week, mm -hmm. pay them a thousand dollars per month for 10 hours per week. That's about twenty-five hour or twenty-five dollars per hour. Yeah. Um, you do that, they will get the support that they need and um, they will feel seen and heard if your accountability coach is effectively answering all their questions. Gotcha. So an accountability coach is somebody that, hey, just checking in, Alex, John, Lauren, whatever it is, how's it going? Oh, this is your problem? Have you looked at this module? Yep. Have you taken action on here? Have you come to the coaching call? A lot of times they just need like, well, I need this thing, and it's already in the content, your accountability coach, boom, right here. Gotcha. Right? And what you should be doing is setting up a cadence. I, I think you already do this, but every Monday we have our goals post. What are your goals for the yeah. for the week? Um, then Friday, always celebrations. Yeah. Wednesday, check-in. Yeah. So your accountability coach can own that, where, hey, these are my goals. Cool, those are your goals, Here are the, here's the video content that align with what you're trying to accomplish this week. Interesting. Check in on Wednesday, your accountability coach checks in on Wednesday, hey, where are you at on this? Yeah. Cool, awesome, you're halfway there, perfect. Yeah. Or I'm a little off, well, have you watched this video yet? Yeah. No, okay, we'll fucking do it. Yeah. Then Friday, sweet, I watch a video and I got my next client, yada, 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 boom, celebration. It feels like the accountability coach is the person that's just applying the consistent push in the right direction that removes somebody swinging back and forth, ups and downs, like I didn't feel like it, and the accountability coach is going, hey, yes, you can do it. Okay, thanks so much, I put it on my calendar. Yeah, it's, that's 90% of it, it's, right? It sounds like it shouldn't have to be done, but we're people, so yeah. fucking fix it. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. That's about it. I think that's all of it. Cool, anything else? Let's see if there are any questions down here. Uh, Martin, great combo, wisdom gents, thank you, brother. Uh, if you're just starting your Facebook group, what is the biggest mistake to avoid? Best single tactic for you to use? Just starting the Facebook group, don't open it up until you have 200 to, or 100 to 200 pending members. You don't wanna create content in there until you have a good amount of people in there or else you're just wasting your time. Um, and start it off with Bang. We recommend a five day challenge or a three day workshop to kick off your Facebook group. So you get engagement in there, it's a big reveal, it's super exciting. They'll up engagement, they'll get more people in there. 
Um, and the biggest thing is don't give up. Um, have do a weekly interview or two interviews a week or in ask me anything and an interview, you stick to that cadence, uh, you, you'll provide the value that you need to your Facebook group. So those, those are the main things. Anything you want to add? I, I think that's about 90% of it. Um, the challenge with a Facebook group that you just open up and let people in is now you have two areas you got to take care of. If you have a critical mass of people and a kickoff, um, for me, I did a poll immediately and started introducing like paid trainings and lunch and learns immediately. So all of a sudden there was a reason to come back. I didn't have to take care of people. And it was less about corralling cats and answering PMs and being like, guys, it's going to be okay. I'm going to answer all the shit on Wednesday. Just tune in then and asking then everyone's like, okay, great. And then they felt taken care of. Um, that's probably like the easiest way to do it. I would also recommend don't feel like you have to PM or sorry, uh, respond to every single comment. If you do that, you actually avoid and push out people that could be contributing and dropping their two cents in a way that makes a great community. Um, what you want to do is have like a structured approach of saying, all right, we're going to do lunch and learns on Wednesday. If you've got a question, that's cool, man. But I've got a business. And if you ask me the lunch and learn on Wednesday, I'm going to have a great answer for you. They say, thanks so much. It's just, it works out a lot better that way. Yep. Good stuff. That's about it. Guys, if you got any value out of this interview, hit that hard button, hit that like button, more engagement we get, the more people we can reach, more people we can help. I can't believe we talked for a fucking hour. It's crazy, right? Uh, and if you were with us, just say hi down below. And Do you think I your will, mom is gonna like watch it until the end? I don't know, let's see. Yeah. Mom, if you watch to the end, hashtag replay down below. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lissette. Um, is asking how can we start a group that big with no content? You start on your personal profile. Yep. It's that easy. Um, start on your personal profile, start creating the uh, Facebook group content that you would on your personal profile, start building up community there and then you open it up. Yep. So easy as that. Sweet. Awesome. Much love guys. Thanks for being here. I'll talk to you guys soon.